Hello everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am the Sipping Tea, and today I'm going to talk to you all about the Cold War Tech Tree medium tank, the M48A5PI. Briefly, however, before I get into that, I just wish to issue a huge, huge thanks to my two patrons, NB Hollywood and Nagare898. Thank you both ever so much for your continued support. It really does help me continue to produce content on this channel. So, with that being said, let's get into it. So, the M48A5PI, otherwise um, sort of typically referred to as the Pi, um, is a tech tree tank from the Western Alliance, sort of uh, leaning into the American vehicles. It is the uh, apex of Era 1. Um, and has, I would say, really proven itself to be a, a really, really good tank, uh, even with um, sort of the addition of other uh, tanks over time into uh, into the tech tree and otherwise. Um, the, the Pi really has sort of kept up with them, I think. Um, of course, when it comes to the uh, sort of the, the battle earn rates and everything, because it is a tech tree vehicle, um, it's not going to have any accelerated earn rates. So what I can say is that the actual purchase cost in, of course, silver for this tank is 4,380,000. So um, obviously a decent amount of money, but uh, not too, too bad, especially if you do find yourself playing Cold War a fair bit, particularly on premium tanks. Uh, you will, of course, earn quite a bit of, uh, of silver. So um, yeah, you'll probably be able to get that sort of money relatively, relatively easily. So moving on to the key statistics, starting of course with the gun. Uh, penetration values first. So these standard rounds offer 268 millimeters. The uh, premium rounds offer 350 millimeters. Um, the damage for both of those is 390. Moving on from that, the uh, rate of fire for this gun is 6.19 rounds per minute, which gives it a reload of 9.7 seconds. The aim time is 1.9 seconds and the accuracy is 0 0.36. Uh, those statistics, of course, can be improved with the relevant uh, equipment, crew skills and consumables. The gun depression is 9 degrees and the gun elevation is 19 degrees. From there, moving on to the engine statistics. So the um, the maximum forward speed of the uh, Pi um, is relatively relatively slow, I suppose, um, when you look at Cold War tanks. But it's 50 kilometers an hour. Uh, the top reverse speed is 21 kilometers an hour. The fire percentage on this tank is. 18% so what am I gonna recommend yeah I'm gonna recommend a fire extinguisher of course um, so yeah it's it's not great when it comes to the risk of fire that 18% is extraordinarily high uh, I think it may be dipped in kerosene before it goes out into every single battle but um, otherwise the engine power to weight ratio is 16.87 horsepower per ton with a horsepower of 810 the HP of the tank is 2000, which again isn't too too bad at all for Era 1. Um, of course, with it being an Era 1, it means that it doesn't have to put up with um, the risk of missiles flying at it. So uh, that makes the armor of the PI reasonably good, um, more so in the turret because of course it is a variation of the pattern. So um, the pattern's turret is famously extraordinarily strong. Um, particularly with the, uh, the rather sort of large gun mantlet sort of shielding the front of the vehicle as well. From there, the um, sort of vision range and um, sort of still concealment. Um, I, I will have had the uh, little cheat sheet on the screen, of course, um, throughout this. So you'll be able to see a little bit more from the still concealment on that. But the vision range as standard uh, sits at 475 meters. So moving on from there, let's now take a quick look at the equipment. So on this tank, the uh, equipment is more or less as standard for any other of my tanks for the most part. So I have improved ventilation, um, gun stabilizer and advanced loader. So um, 
Really, the idea is to improve the accuracy as much as possible and also to improve the reload rate or rate of fire as much as possible. These things will hopefully mean that I'll be able to uh, throw out more damage downrange into the enemy uh, just a little bit quicker and perhaps a little bit more accurately as well. Um, so yeah, overall that will of course just improve the overall battle result. From the equipment, now let's take a quick look at the consumables. So, uh, consumables on my tanks tends to be somewhat dynamic. Uh, you may well have noticed in previous videos that I will have different consumables and different sort of game clips, or indeed from what I uh, talk about uh, when reviewing the consumables. For the most part, however, you'll typically see the uh, the standard sort of loadout, if you will, for my consumables, which is the premium repair kit, the standard med kit, and in this instance, it is the standard fire extinguisher. Um, with the fire chance being so high on this tank, a fire extinguisher I see is really a must, um, possibly even a premium one as well. Um, but for the time being, at least, I have just stuck with a standard fire extinguisher. I will only give a sort of brief nod to the uh, the crew skills on this tank purely because um, this tank actually doesn't have a particularly good commander on board. It is just a standard uh, one skill commander. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's only got six sense and born leader. Uh, ordinarily, of course, I would be looking to include um, things like rapid aim, run and gun, you know, the like, the uh, the usual sort of uh, commander skills that I tend to, to have in most of my tanks. Um, in future, once I've got an abundance of uh, commanders with an awful lot of crew skills uh, on board, then yeah, this tank will no doubt get an upgrade in that regard as well. But for the moment, it's just a token standard commander, really just so I can actually, if I feel like playing the tank, uh, I can go into battle at least with some sort of uh, commander skills on board. So from there let's now take a look at the armor view of the M48A5PI. So here you can see an overview of the entirety of the tank's armor. Um, jumping straight into it, let's take a look here. The tracks come in at 20 millimeters. 25 millimeters is the lower um, or is the underside of the hull at the rear and also the engine deck for the most part. Um, then that small um, bit just uh, below the engine at the rear of the tank uh, comes in at 30 millimeters. 38 millimeters is the uh, the underside of the frontal part of the hull and a little bit more of the rear. 45 millimeters is what you get for the gun. 50 millimeters is the sides of the engine and the majority of the rear of the turret. 57 millimeters is just a very very small part of the gun mantlet on the edges there and also the uh, the top part of the hull armor immediately below the gun mantlet. 60 millimeters is a couple of sort of, uh, sort of sledgehammer shape uh, parts there on either side of the lower part of the hull on the underside. 63 millimeters, um, some rear the rear sort of panels of the turret at the sides just there. 76 millimeters is the, the sort of the frontal side of the uh, the main hull armor along with the turret uh, the turret ring and also uh, some sides of the turret as well 88 millimeters some sort of sprawling parts just there the start of the uh, the puzzle piece that is the uh, the front uh, hull armor of this tank along with a couple of thin patches on the sides of the turret 101 millimeters again some more thin patches on the sides of the turret and some more sort of puzzle pieces as I'm calling them uh, that make up the main hull armor 110 millimeters you can see there is uh, sort of um, parallel um, parts of the front and uh, upper and lower plate of the armor 114 millimeters is again an outer ring of the gun mantlet 127 millimeters is again part of what makes up the frontal turret armor and the front um, upper and lower plate of the tank. 139 millimeters again another part of the front uh, part of the turret armor. 152 millimeters concludes the uh, sort of the puzzle if you will for the front of the tank's hull armor. 177 millimeters is what um, helps protect the turret ring. 203 millimeters, uh, really thick armor now. Um, that is what is uh, sort of protecting the front of the turret again. 241 millimeters is incredibly strong right there on the gun mantlet. And finally, 254 millimeters um, immediately behind the gun mantlet 
concluding the uh, this rather impressive display of armor on the turret of the Pi. Very, very impressive armor on the turret in particular. So if you go hull down in this tank, then you really are going to be in an incredibly strong position with really only the commander's hatch um, showing as a weak, uh, a weak point on this tank when you are hull down. So in conclusion, I would say that the M48A5PI is a really, really enjoyable tank to play. Um, it's a great sort of send-off, if you will, for the uh, Era 1 uh, medium Western Alliance tanks, of the, uh, which ultimately lead up to the uh, M1A2 Abrams. Um, I, I really do think that um, while it is very fun to play uh, once you've got the tank fully upgraded, it is a bit of a challenge um, before that point. Um, the engine really does sort of um, improve your quality of life once you've got that upgrade. Um, but then again, that's just tech tree tanks in a nutshell, really, I would say. They're obviously not um, meant to be or really designed to be, um, you know, their best when they're brand new. Of course they're not, else what's the point of having an upgrade system? Um, but yeah, um, I, I personally would favour this uh, sort of medium path up to the Abrams uh, as opposed to the heavy path for the most part. Um, don't get me wrong, the T-34 and then its uh, sort of upgraded counterparts, the M103 variants, they are very, very fun to play. Um, but they are very different, they're quite a bit slower, the gun handling isn't quite the same. I mean in my T-34 one day we'll make a video on that and you will actually see that the commander in that one, because the gun is so woefully inaccurate, I've actually called the commander Mr. Magoo. Um, because there's nothing that he doesn't enjoy more than missing whatever you're aiming at. So um, yeah, I think that's why I um, I prefer the uh, the M48A5 uh, PI line, just because it's a little bit more uh, balanced, I would say, a bit more rounded overall as a uh, as a part. Um, that of course is a hugely subjective um, point of view, it is of course just my opinion. Um, so you know, take it with a pinch of salt, take it for what it is, an opinion. Um, but yeah, that, that is my approach to the M48A5PI, the, the Pi. So with all that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you all ever so much for watching. Please do check out the links in the description below for my Patreon page if you fancy uh, showing a bit of love and a bit of support to me uh, while I make these uh, while I make these videos. Um, also, please do offer any sort of uh, co well constructive criticism or advice or anything really down in the comments section. Um, it's been a little while since I've sort of openly invited people to do that but the invitation is always there i suppose in my own mind it's just a, a given that goes without saying um please do share your opinions uh in the comments section because if you would rather i included something in these videos or uh indeed cut some stuff out whatever um please do just share those thoughts with me down below because uh, i would really like to try and mold these videos into something that um, my community really enjoys. I hope that I'm more or less already there, but um, yeah, I'm always looking to adapt the uh, the sort of recipe, if you will, uh, when it comes to making these videos. Um, and I just want to make sure that you guys are enjoying it. So, with all that being said, once again, thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.